Hello again. In this presentation, we're going to have a look at the different components of a fuel cell. We're going to see which are the main elements that must be present in any single cell and also some other components which might be very important at bigger scale operations. As you might know from previous um, presentations, fuel cells are electrochemical devices which allows us obtaining energy, electrical energy, directly from the chemical energy inside some components by the use or by um, the occurrence of some reduction and oxidation reactions. The fuel is going to be oxidized and some electrons are going to be transferred so that the oxygen can accept them and then water will be formed. This magical equation means that um, the production of energy on also implies the production of water but not other sub-products, which is quite interesting. The most important components of a fuel cells are those which are required for the electrochemical reactions to take place. And these are the electrodes, which will basically host these reactions, and an electrolyte, which will be separating both electrons, the anode and the cathode. This is the main scheme of a fuel cell, of a single unit fuel cell, where you could see how uh, in the central part there is the electrolyte um, sandwiched by the two electrodes, the anode and the cathode. The fuel, usually a current of hydrogen, is oxidized here and some electrons are produced. These electrons are going to be driven from an external circuit to the cathode where they will react with the oxygen from the air which is coming to this compartment. It looks beautiful, it is beautiful, but it's also a very complex system because we're going to have some transport phenomena which might be very complex. This means we're going to have charged transport and like the electrons transferring from one part of the cell to the other or the protons or other ions which might be in movement through, um, from one point to the other of the cell. We're going to have mass transport as well, yeah? especially the gases or the ions and other species which are going to be involved in these reactions and also energy transport effects because some heat is going to be released and obviously the electrical energy that we want to take profit. As we said before, the electrodes are probably the most important part of the fuel cell because the electrochemical reactions are going to, are going to take place um, in, this, in their surface. The main functions of electrodes are to provide surface for those reactions, also to transfer uh, the ions from and to the interface with the electrolyte and basically also to separate the gas phase from the electrolyte phase, which is the central part of the fuel cell. In the anode, we will see the oxidation taking place of the fuel coming here and in its surface, we're probably going to have a phase equilibrium between the non-oxidized fuel, the already oxidized fuel, in this case would be the protons here, and also the very anode surface. So we're going to have a three-phase equilibrium and that's because that's why this is a very complex system. In general, the anode as well as the cathode is formed of a porous material which is electrical conducting with some metallic particles cast on it. These metallic particles will act as a catalyst for the electrochemical reactions and this is going to make the fuel cell to be slightly more expensive because these particles are usually the most expensive part of the fuel cell. The cathode is usually formed of the same material as the anode it also has a very complex um, phase equilibrium because there are, where you can find the non-reduced oxygen coming through, also the water that might be produced or the other product of the reactions, if the reactions are different, 
and also the cathode surface which is going to be solid um, similarly to the anode the cathode will be formed probably by carbon cloth or graphite or other materials which um, helps you obtain these electrons and use them when you want but also must contain some catalyst particles so that the electrochemical reactions can indeed happen again it's very important that these uh, porous materials have very high surface to volume ratios because we will be able to have very reacting surface in a very small volume of electrodes they all together the electrodes as I said before are probably the most expensive parts of the fuel cell and also mm, the most sensitive because they, must, they might be uh, poisoned very easily by the effect of some components on the other hand the electrolyte uh, is also a very important part of the fuel cell of the cell of the unit cell because it must separate both anode and cathode you have to remember that in this kind of reactions in fuel cells it is very important that oxidation and reduction take place separately so that there can be a flux of electrons through an external circuit this is the main function of electrolyte but it's not the only one because in order to have a mass balance in this in the whole reaction we will need protons to be transferred from the anode to the cathode or other ions, non necessarily protons and we will ask the electrolyte as well to separate hmm, the two gases which are going to be uh, the reactants, basically oxygen and hydrogen this previous, these three previous components are the main components of uh, are the core of a, of a fuel cell but we can find other components when the system starts to give uh, more energy like in a bigger scale this is the case of uh, all the components necessary to associate single cells into stacks why do we do this? very simple because may, we may want to obtain higher energy and then we have this configuration of single cells to obtain a stack of cells and to increase the voltage and therefore the power, the electrical power um, this also implies more technological effort in the design of the stacks using not only the electrolyte and the electrodes but also, also some collecting plates and plates which can allow you to have a more compact system like in this stack that you can see in this figure um, it is also important that uh, there are cooling systems and heat recovery systems because the heat that we're going to obtain in this reaction could be very interesting to be used in other parts of the plant as we may see in other presentations in this course this is another schematic representation of what a stack of fuel cells is and it is important to design it and in order to optimize the use of the different components especially other operations related to the collection of the energy in the current collection or the cooling system and in conclusion these systems and uh, fuel cells are very simple systems which are based on a central core which would be the individual cell consisting of an electrolyte and two electrodes uh, which are sandwiched in the electrolyte and there are some auxiliary additional systems uh, like the plates, collecting plates or cooling systems, uh, heat recovery systems and this is all because we need or we would need to have higher energies and therefore we will need to uh, prepare these stacks to have um, higher power in higher scale operations so as usual it's been a great pleasure I hope you enjoyed this presentation I honestly did and that's all thank you for your attention